Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we've got an image here, when you click on it, it's going to flip to another image. Now we've just done this with the Divi theme and unfortunately uh, the guy that was asking about it wanted it done with Elementor and that was my mistake for doing it with the wrong platform. So here it is with Elementor, I've just got a page here with an image, we'll start from scratch. So I've got the page open with the Elementor Builder here. I'm going to use a code module for this and this will work perfectly with the free and the pro version and you can check out either from my affiliate link down below. If we roll on down here to the general, the general widgets, I'm looking for an HTML widget. Now this would probably work just as well with a text module on the text setting itself but I'm going to use a code widget for it. So we put something in there and it's got no content at the moment. Now what I want this to be is an image and when I hover over it I want to be able to click on it and see a different image. So let's find the image that we want first. I've got my media library open here. Okay well let's grab this image and you can either hit the copy to URL or you can select and copy however you prefer to do it. And we'll go back. I'm going to start writing a bit of HTML here. So it's left pointy bracket, IMG for image to tell it it's an image that we want to put in there. Then we've got to say SRC, the source, or where the image actually lives, equals. Open some inverted commas. And inside the inverted commas, we can paste that URL we just copied from the image. And there's our image right there. We just need to put a right pointy bracket to close it out on the right hand side. Great, well we've got our image here, but we're gonna to have to create a function to make it clickable so we can switch between it and another image. And the image we're gonna to switch to is gonna reside in the column, little dark tab for the column, little blue tab for the module itself. So let's create a function. I'm gonna go back inside that pointy bracket there. I'll put a gap, I'm gonna say on click, all one word equal, open and close some more inverted commas, and I'm going to say my function, my capital function. And I need to open some round brackets right at the end of there. And we've got to create this function and tell it what it is in just a moment. But we, at the moment we've told this it's going to be an image, and when we click on it, it's going to have to do something called my function. Great. Well, let's get our other image in place. We've got our little bit of HTML there. And the way that this works, as I mentioned earlier, the second image is going to reside in the column behind. So let's click on the column tab. I'm going to go to style in the middle there. Background type. I'm going to hit the little paintbrush there. I can add an image to the background. Choose whichever image you'd like. Let's just grab that next door image. Now you won't be able to see it because it's behind our original image there. You can see some spillage where it's filling up the whole of that column there. And we've obviously got a bit of padding on the column that's giving it about 10 picks, I think, top, bottom, left, right. So let's fix it so they're both the same size. So still in the column settings, I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to take away any padding that there by simply putting a zero in the padding right here. I've got that highlighted so it'll do all four at once. As you can see, that front image now is almost covering our back image. So to make it similar to the one next door, I'm going to add a bit of margin to cut it back down again. So again, I'm not going to uncheck the highlight there. I'm going to put 10 in there. And there we are. We've got our original image and we've got an image behind it in the column. OK, well, let's go back into our widget and decide what we want to do with it. I've got to create a style now that's going to make our top image invisible. So we see the, the bottom image and then I'm going to create a function to sort of bring it back. So I'm going to drop down a couple here. I'm going to open some style tags. Style tags are left pointy bracket and the word style, right pointy bracket. When you put the second right pointy bracket in, it'll put the closing tag in for you, as you can see there. And I'm going to create a class of image switch. So all classes have a dot or a period in front of them. So there's a dot. And I'm going to call mine IMSW for image switch. Great. And what do we want it to do? 
Let's open and close some curly brackets. And I want it to become invisible. So I'm going to say opacity zero semicolon. Okay, nothing's happened because we haven't really told it what to do with this. So this is where we've got to create the function that we mentioned up above here. So I'm going to drop down a couple and all this code will be available down below. I may have it in a downloadable PDF because unfortunately YouTube won't let me put pointy brackets down in the comments below. So I'll probably save this to a PDF and let you download it for anybody that needs to download it. Okay, well, let's create our script. And it's the same as the style tags. We want a left pointy. We're going to say script this time and a right pointy. And it'll close the brackets for you. Now we called the function that we want my function up here. So let's say function and the name of the function, which is my function. And some round brackets at the end there. Now, what do we want it to do? Let's open some curly brackets and tell it what we want it to do. Now we've created this style. So we want a variation that it gets the element. We'll give this actually an element ID in a minute and changes the style. So I'm going to say variation or var element. Now this equals, we want to get the document. And it's get element capital E by capital B ID capital I. So we can assign our image an ID now and tell it to select it. And the ID that I'm going to give this in a moment is image SW. So let's go ahead and give this that ID. So let's copy this. Go to the advanced tab. We roll down a bit you'll see css id make sure you put it in id and not in classes there there we go let's go back now and finish off our little bit of code let's put a little semicolon there we'll drop down and we want it to grab the class name so the element class name i m s w that we gave it up there so we're going to say element dot class list capital L for list dot toggle what do we want it to toggle we want it to toggle this style IMSW so let's put some round brackets in there put some inverted commas and inside the inverted commas we can put that class name IMSW image swap okay well, let's save this and see what we've got There's our image. When I click on it, as you can see, it's flipping to the other image. Now the other image, we've got a bit of a corner. We've only got partial image there. So let's just check that in our background there. Everything else is working fine. Let's go back into the column where that second image is sitting. There's our image. Position's fine. I'll make sure it's top left. I don't want it to scroll or be fixed, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. Don't want it to repeat. Size wise, I want it to cover actually the whole of the area. So let's update and take another look at that. There we go, we've got our whole image there. Now, just as a bit of an extra, if that's all you want to happen, that's going to work fine. But I thought it'd be nice to add a little hover click me pop up so people actually know to click it. And we can change the cursor into a little hand or a grabber or a pointer there indicate that something's going to happen when we want to click on it so let's go ahead and do that we'll go back to the page we'll go back into the element okay well let's add the pointer first back up in our style over here after the last curly bracket there i'm going to drop down we know we've got a class name of image or an id of image swap or image sw for this so I'm going to say image SW. What do we want it to do? Let's open this. Open and close some curly brackets there. Drop down. 
I'm going to say cursor, colon, pointer, semicolon. As you can see, we've now got a, a grabber or a pointer when we hover over, which indicates you can do something with it. Now, if you want to add this last little bit here of just having a little click me pop in when they hover over it, we can do that with a bit more CSS code. So let's go over here and we'll drop down again. And we're going to use a pseudo element to do this today. So we're going to use image SW and it's an ID, so it's hashtag. But we want to put it in the before pseudo element, so it's two colons. I'm going to say before. Then let's open and close some curly brackets here. And don't forget this code will be down below for anybody that just wants to copy and paste it rather than learn how to do it. So I'm going to give it some content. Colon. Let's open some inverted commas here and tell it what it, we want there. I want it to say click me. Obviously you can have your say whatever you want. And as you can see it's put it at the top there. We're going to absolutely position it so it's somewhere down the bottom here. So let's drop down another line. We're going to say position. Colon absolute. So it'll stay exactly where we put it. Where do we want it? I want it about 90% down from the top. So I'm going to say top colon 90%. And halfway across from the left hand side, so I'm going to say left 50%. And it's kind of down there, it's kind of dark, you can't see it very well there. Let's make it white. I'm going to say color FFF, which is hex for white. There we go, you can see that better. But it's not really in the center, that left corner is right in the center there, but this writing's over slightly to the right. So we can adjust it with some transform translate and I can adjust it by negative 50 of its width and negative 50 of its height and that should adjust it to exactly the center spot there so let's do that transform and we want to translate oops around brackets there and we want to go negative 50 percent by negative 50 percent comma negative 50 percent That's better, that's smack in the middle there, and that's gonna stay there. But of course, we only actually wanna see it when we hover over, so that it doesn't intrude on, on the image too much. Now, if you wanted your text to be bigger or smaller, you could add a font size here, so that it's safe. I'll make mine about 20 pixels, I think. That's absolutely fine. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is hide it so it's not there initially. So I'm going to say opacity. Colon zero. And then we need to create a hover state to bring it back when we hover over it. And the time I want it to take to come back in is about three quarters of a second. So I don't want it to be instantly in. I want it to kind of fade in a bit like that one there. So let's give it a transition duration in our regular state here. I'll say transition dash duration. And I'm going to make mine 0.75 seconds or three quarters of a second. Obviously, you make yours whatever works for you. Now we need to bring it back when we hover over it. So let's grab this ID up here, including the before there. I'm going to drop down a couple. I'm going to paste it in there. Let's create a hover state. Right after the SW, I'm going to put another colon no gap at the end of the w there colon and then no gap again and the word hover and then we've got two colons after for the pseudo element before and what do i want it to do well i want it to bring it back so opacity one which will be fully visible so let's open and close some curly brackets drop down opacity one semicolon so now when we hover over there we go it's taking three quarters of a second to pop in there and we can click on and switch the image. So that should be it. And I'll copy this, like I say, and let you have it down below. So let's update this now. And let's go and see what we've got. There's our new little image there. When I hover over, it's got the click me. When I click on it, it's gonna to flip to the other image. 
So there you go, guys. There's how to create an image swap on click effect using the free or the paid version of Elementor. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.